You know, of course, my greatest hope is that this industry brings economic prosperity to this region and the state of Pennsylvania and the natural gas industry uh, has a significant impact on addressing the global climate change issues. Okay. The concerns are, uh, just like any other scientist, is that I know how little I know. And so the concerns are, what is going to hit us around the corner that we're not aware of that we're going to have to deal with in terms of the uh, long-term environmental impacts of this industry? My name is Radis Savidic. I am a professor of uh, environmental engineering at the Swanson School of Engineering Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. And for the last uh, four or five years, I've been intensively involved in doing research uh, related to the Marcellus Shale exploitation and conventional gas drilling. And, and more, more specifically, I focus on water management issues. And to some extent on environmental impacts of the industry as a whole. Well, before we start talking about your studies, I have to ask the question, who is funding your studies? Well, right now, uh, the funding for my research comes uh, exclusively from federal government. So gas industry is not funding your studies? No. This middle ground type research that's not, you know, driven by either the advocacy groups on either side, that is something that hasn't received the adequate attention and I think the state should be the lead in this because the state stands to benefit a lot from this industry. This is where we are, on top of the silo. So that's what they're in the process of fracking it, and uh, th they think that by the end of the year it's possible the well could be under production. We'll just cross our fingers, hope everything goes well. What's encouraging to me is that when you look at how the technology is designed to operate, if executed properly and according to the standards, by and large, the environmental impacts are not going to be that significant. So you have one, two, three casings, which are steel pipes that are in, nested in each other, and they are providing the barrier between the the uh, um, flow back, the flow back, or the frac fluid, or the flow back water, and your aquifer. And then you have this section down here that's a horizontal well that's also cemented. However, there is usually a section of the well that's not cemented all the way to the surface. And this is what we're working on right now to figure out when these sections should be cemented all the way to the surface because this section provides an opportunity for a gas that may be residing up here to actually percolate up the, the well and get into the aquifer and contaminate the aquifer. If you look at the, you know, the pictures, the artistic rendering of how that looks like is this. You have, you know, the wells that are going in each direction and they're, they're collecting the gas out of this location. That sand is a quartz sand. It's like a beach sand. Imagine you're on the beach and the sand and the wind picks up and starts scaring the sand everywhere. That's the same thing. So there's and, no chemicals mixed in that no, sand? No, not in that sand. And, and so I was just recently at a conference where uh, uh, one company developed a method to actually capture all the fugitive dust emissions from the sand and carry a common header and address that issue. You know, if that be an issue for the industry in this region. We don't have all these tankers you see coming in today with water. That's potable water they're bringing in from, uh, from Butler and here in Saxonburg.
uh, projections for Marcella Shale are that in 2013, based on what their projections are for the drilling needs and so forth, the Marcella Shale industry will be less than half a percent of all industrial water uses in Pennsylvania. The critic says you take the water out of the natural cycle, inject it in the ground and you lose that water. You don't lose all of it, you get 20% back and if you recycle it that means okay you lose just 80%. However, when you burn natural gas to generate electricity, to generate the steam and generate electricity, you get the water back. So if you think of the Marcel natural gas industry as a industry that's supposed to support energy production, the natural gas industry uses the least amount of water per kilowatt hour energy they produce compared to coal, nuclear, solar, bio, whatever. Well, right now, the biggest issue that this industry has, I think, is, is related to truck traffic. It's phenomenal. If you, if you talk to the people living in these communities, the biggest problem is that there are thousands of trucks going back and forth across this country roads that were not designed for it. And so what we're trying to do is trying to come up with a creative way of reducing the truck traffic and finding local sources of water that may be suitable for hydraulic fracturing. doing in this area of the lab is we're evaluating the compatibility of abandoned mine drainage and so with a particular flow back water and what's going to happen if we mix the two how the chemistry is going to react these buckets that you see here are flow back water from various locations and then we find the actual abandoned mine drainage that's located within five miles of that flow back water location so this would be the actual flow back water in the actual abandoned mine drainage that would be mixed together to frack the next well. And so in these systems here, we're studying how the chemistry will occur, what the reactions are, and then we evaluate various treatment options. The, the objective is to see whether we can actually use locally available water that's abandoned mine drainage that we know is one of the biggest environmental concerns in Pennsylvania from the mining operations. These discharges are red water, the low pH sometimes, high sulfates, and these discharges are polluting our rivers. And so what we're suggesting is that maybe there is a way for industry to use this water to frack with instead of using tap water or surface water so we can kill two birds with one stone. They reduce the water footprint on of the industry in the region plus they help mitigate some of the environmental legacy issues from another energy industry from from years ago and the third benefit of that approach i think would be that we can get trucks off the road and so we wouldn't have to uh, have 1500 truck trips per well we can have uh, uh, you know just a pipeline to carry the water so to me much more important question is what do you do with that water when it comes back out? Because the level of environmental impact that this water may have is much more significant than the level of impact that the frac fluid may have when it's used in the operation. You have to distinguish there is a flow back water and then there's a produced water. Flow back water is coming at a much higher flow rate initially, but the flow back water occurs during the first seven to 15 days, one to two weeks. And the flow back water comes out at maybe three, 4,000 barrels a day, and then it quickly levels off. After that, the well is placed in the production, the gas goes into the pipeline, but there is some water that keeps coming out for the life of the well the amount of water that comes out for the life of the well is called produced water and this water comes out maybe i've seen the numbers between five and, and 30 or 40 barrels a day and that keeps coming all the time and that's going to be the issue going forward so um, at the moment you know there are collecting these produced water that comes out in those green tanks and once everything is done 
they will clear out a field, get rid of everything, and so you end up with a, something that looks like a gas station. That's where the produced water comes back out. And so they come in periodically and empty those tanks and take it into the impoundments or storage tanks and mix it with the flowback water. So they recycle that too, for the most part. But again, when we're done with all of these, you know, in 10, 15, 20 years, whatever the case may be, somebody's gonna have to do something with that produced water. This produced water contains a lot of salts dissolved in it. And so if the, the solution is to say, let's go ahead and treat this water and recover 90% of it and concentrate the salts and take the 90% and put it back into the geologic cycle or something like that, we end up with phenomenal quantities of salts. And I don't know where we're gonna go with it. De-icing of roads, we're gonna run out of roads to de-ice with that salt because the amount of salt that we could be making in Pennsylvania is almost the same, close to what is the entire United States using in a year to de-ice de all the roads. So we're gonna have to think about industry that can use these as a raw material chemicals to develop another industry that can be able to you know operate in this region based on that as a, as a cheap readily available raw materials. There was a lot of uh, uh, a lot of hoopla about radium in or the natural radioactivity that comes back with a, a flowback water. So we have a project where we're looking at understanding what is the fate of radium and where does the radium go once it's taken out of the ground and whether the radium gets recycled or concentrated and keeps growing in concentration uh, as you reuse this water if the radium concentration is going to grow more and more and more. So we want to answer that question. Also looking at a developing new technologies for this scenario that I think at the moment is feasible and that is when you run out of wells to inject into and you have to treat this water, what is it that you can do with it for the final disposal alternative, how you can clean out the salts, recover as much water as possible so you have very limited amount of waste to dispose of. We can do that right now with evaporators and crystallizer, but it's fairly expensive. And so if we come up with a, a more effective solution, economically more effective solution, then I think that will be uh, uh, one tool in the arsenal that industry will have to deal with their water. Why do we need to rush with this, with this development before we have answers for these questions? That is a, a, a legitimate question. You know, why do we have, I mean, this gas is not going anywhere. I mean, it's going to stay in Pennsylvania forever and we can just go ahead and get it. But if you look at it from the perspective of the industry and it says, okay, uh, if the industry can sign the leases for the land and mineral rights that are indefinite, they wouldn't be rushing anywhere. But if they have to pay royalties on these rights and say you have three years to hold this lease by production, they don't have a choice. Uh, when I saw how big this was, I, I did. I did I had second thoughts, and but I had already signed the lease, and I can't. You know, once you sign a legal document. There's no going back. Um, but uh, it's uh, been down there for millions of years, the gas, and, and uh, they have the technology to get it. And uh, like I said before, I think this is going to be one of the richest states in the nation. The life cycle of concrete and steel mm -hmm. is minimal compared to the life cycle of aquifer. True. Uh, uh, that is. Um, um, somewhat of a philosophical issue because we don't know what's going to happen in 500 years. One thing that I do know is that, you know, it would be a good idea to plug up these wells when they're out of use. When we're no longer using them, it would be a good idea to pour a bunch of concrete and plug up this well and then you bring it closer to what originally it was. Uh, whether this is going to happen or not, I don't know. And that's something that we ought to be thinking from now to make sure is that 
what is potentially long-term impact of that hole in the ground, you know, this, this well in the ground, and how can we actually minimize any unforeseen adverse impacts? What it was invented in Pennsylvania is the whole idea of being able to reuse this water. And that has a significant implication on natural gas industry anywhere else in the world. You know, anybody who's gonna be doing hydraulic fracturing is gonna look at us and say, well, these guys in Pennsylvania are recycling the water, therefore it's doable and they're making economics with it. Even with a low gas prices, why don't we do the same thing? And that has a significant implication on the natural gas industry as a whole.